Hi everyone, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today we're going to start the process of doing a tune-up on the 356. Now this is sort of a three-step process. You start with the valves and then when you get done with the valves you do the electrical tune-up and then after the electrical tune-up is the carburetors. So we're going to just do the valves today so we're starting just step one. That's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. Tools and supplies we'll need. We'll need our rubber gloves, lots of shop towels. We're going to need a big screwdriver with a plastic handle to get the valve covers off. Our two feeler gauges, 0 .004 inch and 0 .006 inch. A 36 millimeter socket, and that's for turning the engine over, and a big ratchet for the socket. Then we'll need a short, stubby, flat screwdriver if we need to adjust the valves and a 13 millimeter wrench for the lock nut on the valve adjusters. We'll also need valve cover gaskets. Now there are two versions of this. There's a thinner single cork gasket that needs to be glued in place each time or these are the actual ones that were in the car. These are double thick with a metal sandwich in the center of them and they can be used over and over and all you have to do is just grease them when you install them and they'll seal up just fine. I'll run you through the process for this. So step one is going to be to pop our valve covers off and so we can get a good look at the valves. Step two is going to be to pull our distributor cap off. And the reason we're doing that is so we can set the engine to top dead center for cylinder number one. There's a little notch in the top of the distributor so we can get that all lined up. Cylinders in this car are labeled number one here in the right forward, two behind that, and then on the left forward is number three, and behind that is number four. Our firing order is one, four, three, two. So once we have top dead center of cylinder one all set, what we're going to do is go ahead and rotate ahead and skip forward to cylinder number four. And the only reason we're doing this, because the next one after four is three, and that keeps you on one side of the car for two cylinders, which is nice. And then once we get done with four and three, we'll then do two and one. And we rotate 180 degrees each time in between the cylinders. We'll double check our valve clearances. Any of them out, we'll go ahead and adjust them. Once we're done with all that, then all we have to do is re-grease our gasket that goes on the valve covers and reinstall the valve covers. And then the last thing is just going to be to put the distributor cap back on and we're pretty much all finished. Something I want to point out really quick, there's a sticker here on the fan shroud here that says that the valve clearances are 0.006 for the intakes and 0 .004 for the exhaust and now that's incorrect for this car. This sticker is really for a Super 90 so somebody put this sticker on a while back because they I guess they couldn't find the real one, the correct one for the car. My point with this is is that you should always check your owner's manual for the correct year of your car to be super certain as to what your clearances are. So something else about, the, about doing valves is you want to make sure that you always do your valves with the engine cold. You never, never with the engine warm. All right, so the first thing we'll do is go ahead and raise the car and pop off those valve covers. Now they're going to leak a little bit, so we'll throw a little towel on the extractors back there so we don't get a bunch of oil all over everything. So how we get this thing off is we use our little tool to sort of pry this bailing wire thing, this bail cover off, and then drop it down. So we're going to pry it out and down. It just has to come off that notch. Then we drop it all the way down. And this should be fairly easy to move. It shouldn't be stuck. So believe it or not, that's all it's holding the valve cover on. So now all we do is just work our valve cover off. Now there's a cork gasket on here, there should be. There's a little bit of oil, of course it can drip a little bit, that's fine. 
I like to take this opportunity to go ahead and clean everything really, really well. So uh, clean the outside of it and clean the inside of it. Uh, look for anything in there to make sure there aren't any like metal bits or anything horrible that really should not be inside your valve covers. These look fine, just a little bit of oil. But I'm just going to go ahead and clean them and get them prepped and ready so that I don't forget to do it before I put them back on again. Okay, now we're on the left side. We're going to do the same thing we did on the right side. We're just going to put our rags up there and get our, um, our hoop off here, our little bailing hoop off, and pull our valve cover. Now that we have our valve covers off, we're going to go ahead and lower the car and get under the boot and we're going to pop the distributor cap off and set the car to top dead center cylinder number one. Goes without saying, I suppose, the car needs to be in neutral for this. When you put your car in neutral, make sure that if you've got it sitting on a lift like I do or if you've got it on the ground that you make sure you chalk your wheels first. You do not want the car rolling, of course. So in order to get the distributor cap off, it's pretty simple. There's just these little clips on the sides and you just sort of pop them off, one on each side, and you can lift the distributor cap straight up, clear the rotor underneath. There we go. Now the notch we're looking for is right here. It's a little hard to see, but the notch is right here. It's sort of at the five o'clock-ish position, something like that, I guess. We're gonna rotate our engine until the rotor lines up with that. We're using our 36 millimeter socket to rotate the end of the generator. Fun little fact, if you've got your tension set properly for your belt, it will be difficult to get it to turn the engine over. You're probably gonna to have to push the belt together. If it turns over easily and you, can, and you don't have to mess with the belt and you can turn over the engine just fine, then your belt is probably too tight. Now you can also tell you're at top dead center. There's a notch here, right on the tower here for the generator. There's a notch here as well on the rear pulley. So that tells me I'm now at top dead center, cylinder number one. Now that we have top dead center for cylinder number one, we're actually gonna skip over cylinder number one and go on to four. That way we can do four and three together and then we'll do two and one together. In order to forward on to cylinder number four, we're gonna rotate the crankshaft 180 degrees. You'll know you're at the 180 degree mark is there's another notch on the pulley here, but there's just a single notch all by itself. And we can see that our distributor rotor is pointing about 90 degrees off of where we were. So that totally makes sense. Okay, so now we have top dead center for cylinder number four. So remember we've got one, two, three over here and then four. So cylinder number four is the rear left cylinder. So let's go ahead and check those valves and adjust if we need to. All right, so we now have set top dead center for cylinder number four, which is this one here. This one is three, this one's four. These in the center are our intake valves and our exhausts are on the outside here. So one quick thing you can do is sort of Grab these guys and see if they sort of rock back and forth a little bit. That's always a very good sign. Our intake is 0 0.004 inch. So we grab our feeler gauge and we slide it between here, move it back and forth. This one's even maybe a tad loose. You should feel a little bit of friction, not too much. A little bit loose is better than a little bit tight. So I'm actually going to leave that right where it is. The one on the right here, the exhaust, can be a little difficult to get to. Easiest to get to from the outside and sort of slip the feeler gauge in. Now this is a .006, so this one's slightly bigger. And we're feeling just about the right friction. So this just takes a little bit of experience doing this a few times. You don't want it so loose that it'll fall out on its own. But here you can see that it'll stay in by itself. 
you want a little bit of friction, but you shouldn't have to wiggle it back and forth to get it through. It should go in and out just nice. Okay, well those are great. I'm actually gonna leave those exactly where they are. So that's great. Okay, so that's it for cylinder number four. We're gonna rotate 180 degrees and do cylinder number three next. So we'll go ahead and rotate our crank 180 degrees until our notches come up again. Here they come. And we're looking to line up the center notch again with the notch on the generator pedestal. And there we go, all lined up. The distributor should be 180 degrees out from our top dead center cylinder number one. Okay, so now we're at top dead center for cylinder number three, which is this one. This is our exhaust again and our intake. Just wanna grab these guys. That's always a good sign. 0 0.004 for our intake. That's pretty loose actually, super loose actually. And 0 0.006 for our exhaust, which the exhaust feels fine. I think I'm going to leave the exhaust right where it is, but I think the intake feels a bit loose, like really loose, like it would just fall right through. So let's go ahead and adjust the intake just a tad. So what we do is this is our catch nut here, our lock nut. We're gonna loosen that up and we're gonna put our screwdriver on the end of the adjuster here. Like that, there we go. We're gonna loosen this guy up. All right, and then we can tighten down our screw a little bit. As soon as it's loose enough, there we go. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna hold the screwdriver and then tighten this back up again and we'll, re we'll recheck it. This can be sort of an iterative process going back and forth and back and forth. How does that feel? That actually feels really good. So I'm gonna leave that there. We got it just a smidgen tighter and that's exactly where it needs to be. Cylinders three and four are all adjusted. These feel nice and loose, that sounds great. And now we can move on to cylinders one and two on the other side of the car. So adjusting the valves is exactly the same process for each cylinder and every cylinder is 180 degrees apart. So we're just going to rotate the engine 180 degrees every time and go ahead and double check all of our valves and adjust as necessary. 20 minutes later. All right, with all four cylinders adjusted and all eight valves adjusted, next step's going to be to put the valve covers back on. Before we can put our valve covers back on, we need to dress our gaskets and just place them in the valve covers themselves. Now, you want to be careful with these valve covers, or at least you want to take a look at them pretty carefully. They should be clean all the way around this surface here, because this is the, this is the ceiling surface. Uh, these are old cars, and so originally these gaskets were always glued in. And so there's probably going to be some remnants of glue and stuff in there. You just want to make sure you have a nice smooth surface all the way around. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of grease on our gasket here and then we just sort of place it in here. The other nice thing about the grease is that it just hold, helps hold the gasket in when you're trying to assemble the thing so the thing doesn't fly back out again. So I just have some standard kind of black grease here, nothing really special. And all you want to do is just coat both sides of it and just kind of get it a little bit wet. All right, with grease all the way around, we're all set. We can just kind of set it inside our valve cover. And so just do the other one exactly the same. Okay, with both of our valve covers prepped and ready to go, we're ready to put them back on the car. Reinstalling our valve cover is just the opposite of taking it off. So we want to make sure that the mating surface on the car, on the cylinder head, is actually clean. So go ahead and check that out and just make sure it's nice and clean. 
and then we pretty much just work the thing up and then we're going to push that bail wire back over the center of this to lock it in place. I think it's easiest usually to kind of get it up over the top first. There we go. Make sure it seats properly before you try to clamp it on. Once it's seated properly, it might slide a little bit, but not much. You can start the, the bailing wire thing on a bit and use your screwdriver that you use to take it off to go ahead and put it back on. You'll hear a big snap when it gets into place. It's almost there. There it goes. Now take your finger and feel all the way around just to make doubly sure that you got it on properly. Yep, feels good to me. You won't be able to see the top, but if you can, if you can feel the bottoms, you should be good. We can now remove our towels. There we go. With the towels removed, you get a little better view. So one more time, just throw some eyes up there and just make sure everything looks like it's in the right spot. The last thing you want is that cover kind of off a little bit and you clamped it on and it kind of squishes it messes it up and it's going to leak like a sieve you'll know when you start up the car oil will go everywhere if you didn't get that right so you want to take a good look at it now and just make darn sure that everything looks and feels great okay on to the left one okay so now we have both of our valve covers back on we're all set here we're going to go ahead and lower the car back down and put our distributor cap back on once we do that, we're going to go ahead and start the car and then we're going to look for leaks over here on both of these valve covers. We want to make darn sure that we don't have any leaks because these would be bad, very bad leaks. Oil would go everywhere. So we want to know that before we pull the car out of the garage. So the last thing we need to do is go ahead and put our distributor cap back on. There's a little tab sticking up there and that's what's going to index the distributor cap with this little slot right here. We want to just check, make sure that we haven't knocked anything loose. Everything looks fine in there. Try to take this guy on and sort of turn it a little bit. It sh once it's down, it shouldn't rotate. And then we just put our clips back on. Simple enough. And just sort of give it a little tug and make sure that it's all happy and isn't loose. Okay, now with our distributor cap back on, we're all set to fire the car up and we want to check underneath and look for leaks. We've checked underneath and there are no leaks, so we're all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Now, this is just the first of a three-parter, so the next one's going to be an electrical tune-up. So look for that one, and then after that, we'll do the carburetors. So thank you so, so much for watching, and until next time, safe travels. Bye.